Good evening. And uh, we finished the book of Genesis in our exploration of the Old Testament is about you. And I mentioned at the end of it that we would uh, take a break from that particular series and go back to answering some questions on our introduction to the Orthodox faith. I had wanted, instead of just presenting uh, an introduction to the Orthodox faith, after we finished the basics, to respond to specific questions about it so that we could develop this introduction to the Orthodox faith. Now, on the basis of, of things that are profound in the church, but nevertheless, there are questions that have been asked to us about them. And the one question that had come up a while ago was uh, about the lighting of candles in church. In fact, it came up at the, uh, again at our Maletti last Sunday after the liturgy. We always have a, a Maletti or spiritual talk with questions and answers after each divine liturgy at the monastery. And this question again came up. But uh, one or two of you had written to me in the last two months asking the same question. Well, there are two aspects to the lighting of candles in church. One is where the um, tradition entered into practice in the Orthodox Church itself. And the other is something more profoundly involved in human psychology and in the makeup of the human person. We know that uh, in the first century catacombs, people would bring candles or oil for lamps so that people could see in the divine service. And it was really quite a sacrifice in those days. Poor people simply didn't have oil like that or candles to spare. And very often they would, um, in, in many places, just have a little, take a little shaving of wood or something and light it and then it would not quite burn but glow. And they would have a little bit of a glow in their humble uh, um, dwelling place in order to finish off preparing for bed and go, go to bed when it was dark. So uh, wealthier people or people of, of more means could actually bring a candle or oil, but still it was, it was an offering from the heart. Now there is uh, something we notice uh, about all kinds of people from various traditions, that if you see a scene where someone has had an accident and been killed, particularly a young person, you'll notice that very often people will go there and make a little bit of a memorial. And they usually will light candles. There is a desire within people to do something more than just think about a tragedy or situation. They want to do something physically as well. And lighting candles come so naturally to people. A short while ago, Father Moses and I went up to north central British Columbia, almost to the Alberta border, to serve a funeral for a young man who had drowned while fishing. And many of the students from the school showed up. None of them were Orthodox. And yet all of them brought a candle and lighted a candle and seemed to be delighted that we had candles lighted already for the service, that the, the Orthodox people who were there had lit candles to this young man's memory. Well, the practice entered into Orthodox Christian tradition in the first century catacombs, and still motivated by the psychological need that people have for commemorating someone with a lit candle. The bringing of candles into the catacombs so people could see also followed was followed by the practice of well, when someone was arrested and taken to trial for being a Christian and, and would be martyred that people would light a candle for those who had been arrested and martyred and uh, also for somebody who simply passed away so the lighting of candles for uh, as an act of prayer comes from the very earliest days of the Christian Church. But what amazes me is that people who will criticize Orthodox Christians 
for lighting candles for the departed, will nevertheless hasten to light candles at the site of an accident for someone who's been killed, someone that they know and is perhaps close to them or even just known to them. And we see this continuously, um, and not just here in British Columbia, but I've seen it in America as well and other places. So really, it's the same thing. People who might be atheists, might be Protestants, might be nothing in particular, will light candles for the departed outside of church, alongside a highway, uh, by a tree stump or whatever, where, where uh, an acquaintance or somebody that they know or know of has been killed, but will not light candles in church for the same person. And this has really reflects the development of a prejudice that started in the Reformation. But nevertheless, it's a perfectly natural outpouring, a natural thing to do to light that candle. The difference is that when we light a candle for the departed or for somebody who's ill or somebody we just want to pray for in church, we involve the whole congregation we involve the whole church, both heavenly and earthly, because we're doing this in the church in a liturgical framework. And remember that liturgy means work of the people. And uh, consequently, we have brought this before God and offered this offering before God in the church as a special prayer and as an act of remembrance. And we have thereby invited the whole congregation to pray together with us and uh, to acknowledge that these people are being remembered. So it, this is a very um, profound part of Orthodox Christian expressions of love in prayer. And really it is a, an act of love to light a candle. And that's why our Serbs, uh, we always kiss the candle when we light it and put it in the in the sand or the candle holder. And uh, so this is where the practice began within the church in the first century catacombs. But it wasn't just within the Orthodox Church that this was done. Other people did it as well. And uh, the Jews, of course, had their oil lamps and their candles. So uh, this is a universal human psychological need or psychological manifestation. And we, the, the Holy Church is profoundly aware of these needs of humanity, these things that we need to do for our own sake and that psychologically we need to do when we have a great loss or when we want to express a prayer of love for somebody that we want to do something physical. And of course, a candle with its light is a natural thing to do. So the church has incorporated that into the piety of orthodoxy as a response to this human need, to this human psychological need, and as a continuation of that which took place in the first century catacombs. So that we see how deeply connected the Orthodox Church is to the Christians of the first century, and how profoundly the Orthodox Church understands by grace human needs both spiritual, psychological, emotional, and responds to those in a way that gives a fullness to the Christian life and a fullness to the person's life and helps uh, the person express in a truly pious way before the throne of God in the presence of the Holy Spirit and within the church congregation itself to express this power of love and this commemoration. So uh, this is the origin and purpose of lighting candles in church for the departed. Uh, I suppose some people surmise that when you light a candle for somebody, you're trying to pray them out of hell into heaven. Of course, nobody is in hell and um, paradise has not not been remanifested on earth yet. So you couldn't pray them from one place to the other anyway. Uh, it, it's simply an act of, of genuine love and prayer before the throne of God and within the midst of the congregation. And uh, this is really what the lighting of candles is all about.